Hi, today I want to talk to you about how to build strong relations with your donors. As a nonprofit leader, we are in a constant struggle to find money, right? To find a sponsorship, a project grant or a private individual who's donating to us so that we have the money to serve the community and the cause that we want to serve and do our important work, right? So we're constantly thinking, how can we make those people, those organizations, those companies give us those resources so that we can do our work and make this world a little bit nicer than it is or better, healthier, etc. Right? And the best way to do this is to build long lasting relations, strong relations with those donors or with potential donors so that the donors you have stay longer and contribute more and so that you bring in new donors all the time. Maybe at the moment you are focusing on sending out emails or posts on Facebook and Instagram. Maybe you are uh, blogging on your website. Maybe you're on LinkedIn um, and you're just, you know, posting stuff and seeing what happens. And then we meet situations like what if the people don't see our posts, which is happening all the time because, uh, because of the algorithm, a lot of people don't see what we're posting, even if they're interested in that. What if they don't respond? What if uh, they don't donate? Or also what if they respond and, and what if I'm not responding back to them because I missed their uh, response, right? So I missed their comment and I didn't engage with them and they start to feel lonely and they disengage again. Yeah, so this is something that's uh, uh, creating a lot of stress, just trying out things and not being sure uh, what's happening with that. There's no guarantee that people will see it, that they will respond to it, that they will actually act on it and donate. And all the while you're there and you need that money to be able to do your good work, right? And that's the best recipe to get stressed very quickly, as I know. And that is when uh, probably people start uh, posting things like this. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to read it out loud as well. It's a post saying, if you refuse to listen to the cry of the poor, your own cry for help will not be heard. Yeah, that's a post that I saw of one of our nonprofit friends online a while ago and that made me think like, yeah, what, what do you think is going to happen if a potential donor sees this? This is going to make them feel bad, right? This is like a nightmare, a threat almost to them. That's not going to work. That's not going to give them a good feeling um, and give them the idea like, yeah, I want to join that uh, group. I want to support their work. It makes them feel bad and they will try to avoid it. They will try to avoid you. They might unsubscribe from your email list. They might uh, uh, unfriend you or unfollow you online. They might even block you if you consistently post things like that. And so that's the opposite of what you want, right? But it is possible to build positive and good and strong relations. And I will tell you how. But first, let me tell you, I'm Susanne Bakker and I'm a nonprofit operations strategist. And in this channel, you will find talks about all sorts of nonprofit operations topics like annual reporting, finance, admin, contracting, HR, project design, uh, fundraising, all sorts of things that most people don't like, but that I love. And that's why I'm here trying to share with you my experiences and ideas that hopefully can help you find enthusiasm for these topics and also uh, small or big solutions for challenges you face. So my question to you is please tell me in the comment or send me an email if you would like to keep it between us. What is the biggest nightmare thing that happened between you and a donor, let's say in the past year? Tell me about it because I might be able to help you find a way to deal with that. And I'll tell you uh, one big mistake that I made a while ago. So let's go back to building positive relations, right? So positive relations are not based on a threat like if you don't help, then you won't receive help when you need it. Uh, positive relations are built on a shared dream, right? 
positive relations are built on the idea that we have something in common. You as a nonprofit have a dream and the donor as a person or organization with its own identity and values and principles also has a dream. If it's an organization, usually the dream is called a strategy, a policy, but it's a dream nonetheless, it's the same thing. And so you have a dream, they have a dream. If the dreams are aligned or overlap a little bit, then it's a match, right? That's when you know that you have the right donor and your donor can know that they have the right partner, the right organization to support in whatever way they support with a donation, a sponsorship, a grant, whatever it is, right? So the key here is that they should understand that you have that shared dream with them, right? They should know, hey, that's the organization that wants to achieve this. And that is actually my dream or our dream. So if we support them, then they will help us make our dream come true. Yeah, very easy. They, they just support you with money or in-kind donations or a grant or sponsorship, whatever. And you're going to do the work and their dream is also going to be coming true in this world. Yeah, so that's super ideal, but they just need to know that you're the right person for them. Yeah, so you will need to tell them about that. You will need to talk a lot about your dream and you will need to do it in a way that they can recognize that it's not your dream you're talking about, it's their dream that you're talking about. Yeah? So they need to be able to understand that from what you're saying. And you need to, of course, find different ways how you can talk about your dream and how you can do that implicitly and explicitly. There's a lot to be said about the content of your messages, but the key is you should talk about your dream in a way that they know that your dream is their dream and that it will be helpful for them to support you because their dream will then also be um, served. Yeah, so you need to find the right words to speak to them. So how can you find the right words to speak to them? The words that they use to speak about their dream. Yeah, those are the words that they recognize because that's the way how they talk to themselves about their dream and about their values, what's important to them. Yeah, so you need to find out what those words are. So how can you do that? When it's an organization, it's relatively easy because then you can go to their website, you can go to their Facebook page, you can follow them, you can engage with them, you can read their strategy, their dream document, and you can find out what words they use there to talk about their dream. What are the key things that they highlight about the dream? And then you can see on their Facebook page or on their Instagram account, or maybe they have other accounts, then you can see what their dream looks like in reality for them and how they talk about it informally in a strat strat strategic document. It's usually a little bit more formal, of course, but then you can also see the more informal side and you can also see what they're doing actually already to make this dream come true. So you will find all sorts of information that can help you talk to them in your uh, project proposal, for example, and your introduction letter. Uh, when you meet them at an event, etc. When it comes to talking to private individuals who are donating and companies who are sponsoring, it's of course a little bit diff more uh, difficult because those people usually don't have a website where they say, this is our dream, this is our strategy. And so you need to, uh, to do a bit more work to find out exactly what their dream is, and how they talk about it, right? So you need to see if you can talk to all of them individually. If you don't have too many donors yet, or potential donors yet that you know, then this is doable, right? If you get more, and I hope that you will get more very soon, then you will need to, of course, find a way to pick a few from the big uh, donor database that you have, pick a few of them and then say, okay, these are sort of representative of different kinds of donors that we have. Maybe you have young people, but also elderly people who are supporting you for different reasons. So then you would need to pick a few of each of those groups and talk to them instead of to all those thousands individuals, right? But if you have, um, I don't know, 
I would say depending on the size of your organization and your team, but if you have like a hundred donors at the moment or potential donors or sponsors, you can find a way to spend half an hour a day, an hour a day to talk to all of them individually. Now, if you can't, you can also set up an event, invite people to come to your organization, to come to an event there, um, and you can listen to them there. Yeah, so the key is not just to talk to them, but to engage with them and to listen to them especially, and to find out how are they talking, what is important to them, what are their principles, their values, what is important for them in the work that you do, how do they perceive your work? How, how would they describe the work that you're doing for the shared dream? What, is, what are important elements in that work that might be very different from how you would describe it? And that's why it's important to ask them, like what, what speaks to you in the work we do or in the way how we work? How would you describe it to a friend? How can we help you communicate to your friends about this? What could we do better in our communication online, for example, or at events to make people understand more easily the important parts of our work and our dream? And if you talk to them and listen to them, then you can find out a lot of information that can help you in your communication about your work and your vision and mission as an organization. At the same time, when you are talking to those people individually, you can also find out more about them as a person, right? You can find out like, uh, what is their background? What uh, do they like doing in their free time? Where do they like to hang out? Um, what, uh, what are important things in their lives at the moment? What are important events that they're looking forward to, etc., etc. right? So that you know that if the next, I don't know, a volleyball championship comes up, then you will know that some of your donors are interested in that and you can make a reference to that. Uh, but you also know that maybe a lot of your donors are elderly people and you can talk about what it's like if a grandchild is born, what it's like if a grandchild gets a diploma. All those are things that you can find out from your conversations about what kind of people your donors are, what is important for them, what does their life look like at the moment, and what are important elements in that life. But also when you know what where they like to hang out, so what kind of clubs they go to, um, what kind of cafes they like to go to, which schools they're active in, um, what kind of sports clubs maybe they like to go to, then you can also use that information, of course, not only to talk to your donors, but you can also think like, hey, that school, that football club, that uh, that cafe, there are other people there too. Maybe they also share this dream that we have with us and our donors. And maybe if I go there and I share some information there or I ask if I can um, have a quick talk there, maybe I can find more people who are like my donors, but whom I don't know yet. Or I can ask my donors like, hey, would there be more people in your football club who would be interested in this? And how can we uh, reach those people? Can you help us? Can you give me a contact? Can you give me an idea? Etc. Etc. Yeah. So when you really talk to your donors and especially listen to your donors, then you can find out a lot of information that can be helpful to you in how to talk to them about the work, how, what other topics are interesting for them and that you can use in your communication with them because we can't talk about work all the time um, and uh, where could you find maybe other donors who are like them and how might your existing donors help you there right so there's a lot of information that you can get out of all of that if you take time and listen and that's exactly the bottleneck in all of this and why most organizations don't really invest a lot of time in this strategically and consistently because it takes time and we are in a hurry because we feel stressed, right? We feel like we need that money now, otherwise I need to fire my people. Uh, so we're stressed for time. Uh, we, we, think, we think it's important, but then we don't really implement this consistently. Um, and then it doesn't work, 
right? Then it doesn't work. It doesn't work if you uh, send out a message a day and you have three posts per day on Facebook for one week and then six months nothing. Yeah, that's that's not uh, the right way for uh, for building those relations. Yeah, that's uh, that's not working. And at the same time, it's also not something that you can speed up because if uh, if you try to condense it in time, then it will look very weird and fake, right? So I receive sometimes 10 messages from one person that I don't know at all uh, within one hour or two hours asking me like, how am I, where am I, what am I doing? And I already know from the first message that at the end of the one hour or two hours, they will ask me for my money. So I already know that it's not going to work. It feels fake. They're not interested in me. They're interested in my money, in my wallet. They see me as an ATM, not as a human being. And I am not interested in that kind of connection, right? That's not a connection. That's a disconnect. And so you can't speed it up uh, because it will feel fake. And maybe people will think like, yeah, it's a party trick. They know how to build relations, but they don't have time to really do it well. So they're just condensing it. But in the worst case, like in my case, I would block these people. I will say, I, sorry, I'm not interested in that. I'm blocking them and they can never send me another message again, right? So then uh, we are uh, really not getting closer to the goal of building relations and finding those donors. So it requires time. You might feel that you don't have that time and still you have to give it your time. You have to give it time to think strategically about it, to uh, plan it out carefully, like uh, what is your next step? How are you going to take it? When are you going to take it? Who's going to follow up? How will you do that, etc. And then you need to execute on it consistently. Yeah, then you need to simply say, okay, this is the plan. I'm going to dedicate half an hour of my time to this every day. Um, or one of my team members is going to do that. Or every day one team member is doing that. And between the three or four of us, we can, you know, cover the whole week and the whole month that way. That's what you need to do. But then the good thing about that is that if you do this, then of course you will see that you will build relations that last and the people who support you now will support you tomorrow and they will be there next year for you and they will become your biggest ambassadors. Yeah, They will be the people who will talk to their friends about you, who will tell you, hey, there's a big event there. You should go there and do a presentation. I know the organizer so I can uh, connect you so that you can make that happen. And they will be the grant making donor who will say like, yeah, Next year, we don't have money to support you, but I know a few other donors and I'm going to introduce you to them because I think the work you do is so great and so important that I, I know that I can't support you, but I will help you find ways to continue with this important work for our dream, right? So that's the best result you can have, but that's only coming to you if you invest time in it and real interest in the people that you're engaging with and listening to and not just seeing them as a wallet, as a way to get money and nothing more. If you want to know more about why donors say yes, then join my next video where I will share some results of a survey that I did a while back um, among people who are donating money to nonprofits and who told me why they say yes and why they say no. So in my next video, I will tell you why they say yes. So that can help you think of ways of weaving that into your messages. See you there. Hi, so this is the blooper. I promised to tell you something that I did wrong and I totally didn't. And I do want to share it because it is important because I know what it's like to be desperate when you really need money to keep your work going, to keep your team going. If you have people on your team that you're paying 
for their work, whether that's a high salary or a low salary, doesn't matter, you're paying people for their work. And if you then can't get the money to pay them, then that's going to create a problem for them also. And that can that the responsibility for our team can really make us desperate. And that made me desperate a while ago uh, when I was in a situation where we were waiting for a grant decision and it wasn't coming and uh, we were at the end of our money. And so I spoke to the donor and I told them that, you know, if you don't take this decision fast, then I might need to fire people or I might even need to close the whole operation because we can't go on and we've been waiting for a while now and yeah we're at the end of our money it's gone you know very soon and the moment that i put the phone down after this i knew that this was the wrong thing to do because telling the person that isn't going to make it possible for them to be faster if there are bureaucratic processes that are simply making things go slow or if there are other reasons why things can't move fast so it isn't going to solve any issue that 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 causes the delays it isn't going to make the person feel better because they feel probably that i'm trying to make them responsible for something that isn't their responsibility and it's also, of course, not giving them a good feeling about me because they start feeling like, yeah, if you are now saying that you need to stop the whole thing, then, then what's that that we have been supporting in the past and might support again in the future? Is it so fragile? Is it so badly organized that it can disappear just with one delay, right? So it doesn't make them feel good and it's not going to solve the problem. And it's also making them feel bad about being put in a position of responsibility for something that isn't their responsibility. Uh, because, of course, the whole situation where you end up needing that money now uh, and maybe needing to take horrible decisions if you don't get it, that's, that was totally on me, of course. I should have planned differently. I should have executed the fundraising plan differently. I should have taken precautions, risk management, and so on and so forth. So it was totally on me. And in that conversation, I think the person felt that I was trying to put it on, on them, right? And that's not fair. And that's not a way to build good relations. If you're not being fair with people, and if you're putting your own responsibility on their shoulders to bear, especially if it's a negative one, then that doesn't work. That's not going to build good and strong relations. And it's not going to help your organization and your work move forward. And it's not going to help them understand that they have the same dream because now suddenly you're trying to paint them as the bad guy. Yeah, so that's uh, one thing that I didn't do right. Luckily, it all ended well. And, uh, and so I can say, yeah, I did it right after all, but I know that I didn't do it right. And I just wanted to share that with you because I do know what it's like to feel desperate for getting the money to get things done. Um, and I know that it's not easy to stay calm when you're desperate and to be strategic and to plan and to execute step by step by step. But this is what we need to do. That's what I wanted to share with you.